Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to do the order of operations. So that would be the order of mathematical operations when you have uh, a, an equation that has a summation no notation. And what I mean by summation notation is the Greek letter sigma. It's a capital sigma, it kind of looks like an E, and I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, but the order of operations changes just slightly when you do have uh, that summation notation in your equation. You're probably already familiar with the order of mathematical operations. A lot of people use uh, the acronym PIMDAS, um, or they might use uh, Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally to remember the order in which you are supposed to do things in a math equation. Um, so you could use either of those to kind of help yourself out. However, with summation notation, that, um, that mathematical operator actually gets placed in the middle of that. So it might mess with you a little bit if you try and use one of those, but whatever works for you. Um, but we'll still start with the, the first, the same first um, mathematical operator, which would be the parentheses. So anytime you have an equation that has parentheses, basically you ignore the rest of the equation and just do whatever's in the parentheses first. Next, what you want to look for is exponents. So if you have anything that's squared, um, you would want to do that next after the parentheses. The next thing would be multiplication. So any multiplication you have or any division you have would be after that. And here's where it changes from what you might have learned previously. So after division, we actually want to add in that summation notation. So this, again, does add an extra letter into your acronym uh, where you might have known PIMDAS or PIMDAS. Um, it, we're now putting the S before the A here. Um, so that would be PIM, uh, D, PIMDAS, PIM, it doesn't work as well, uh, but you could try, please excuse my dear silly Aunt Sally might help you uh, remember the order here. So again, please excuse my dear silly Aunt Sally. Um, that adds in that summation notation into the middle of those mathematical operators. So you're going to do any summation notation prior to doing other addition that exists within the equation. And then finally, you could take care of the subtraction. Let's go through some examples of how these order of operations work, and especially in relation to when we have a data set. So a data set would be anything, any data that you've collected from anywhere, really, um, but it would be a set of numbers that you have um, that you're trying to, you know, do some calculations with. So in this example here, you'll see I have X and then a list of numbers. Let's pretend like this X, so X is just um, our different values that we collected in our sample. So let's say we took a sample of four students and we wanted to see what their first quiz score was. So again, X is just our column header. It's um, what we use shorthand to represent um, different people's scores in our sample. So in this sample, again, we had four students and the first student had a score of 10, second student had a score of five, third student had a score of seven, and last had a score of three. So that's our data set there. And anytime you're working with an equation that um, is having you do something to your data set, it will insert, instead of saying, you know, listing all of these numbers out in the equation, it will use just X instead. So what, what it's essentially asking you to do is to do this equation, including all of the X values here. So let's start with a basic one. Um, and again, I, I promised that I would show you what the summation notation looks like. Um, that would be the Greek letter, letter sigma there in front of the 2x. So sigma 2x is we want to take the sum of all of the x values multiplied by 2. So thinking back to 
our order of operations. There's no parentheses here, no exponents. And we do have some multiplication. So multiplication would come next in the order of operations. So that is the first thing that we would want to do here. Um, so what that means is we are going to take that 2 times x and do all of those multiplications first before we do anything else. Okay, so I went ahead and I entered all of our data actually into an Excel spreadsheet just to make this process easier. So like I said, since uh, multiplication was the first thing in that equation that we wanted to do, we're actually gonna take that 2x and we're gonna calculate that for each of these values in our data set. So we're gonna multiply each of those x values. So each of those students scores in our data set, we wanna multiply each of those by two. We can actually use a function in Excel that will make this easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So we can say um, this one we want to be equal to. So we wanna say a2 would be that 10 and we wanna multiply it by two. So A2 multiplied by two doesn't, doesn't look easier at first because you could probably just do that in your head. However, the, the part that makes it easier about this is once, once you hit enter, it will show you that number of 20. If we click, click back in that box and then hover here at that bottom right corner, it turns into a cross symbol. If you click on that and then drag it down, it goes ahead and does that for all of the rest of the numbers in your data set. So it might not save that much time when you're only working with four numbers, but it will definitely help you if you have a lot of numbers or if the math that you're doing is a lot more complex. So here we see now in this column, we have all of those X values that are multiple, multiplied by two. So let's go back to our, um, our equation here. So here's our equation, it was sigma two X. So we took care of the multiplication there with the 2x. Next thing we want to do is the summation. So what summation means is just add all the things together. So since we did the multiplication first, we're going to take that all of those products, those values um, after we multiplied them, and then the summation just means add all those things together. Again, we have a quick way we could do that in Excel is just by even there's even the symbol here right that has the sum and we can click on that sum symbol or you could also type equals sum and then select these um, those values and then if you hit enter it will go ahead and add together all those values again you could probably do that in your head um, but if you had a bigger data set then this would definitely be easier so that is the sum or adding together all of those 2x values. So that is going to be the answer for that first question is going to be 50. There we go. There's my high tech way of uh, writing in the answer into the slide. Uh, we got our answer for that one was 50. So let's move on to this next example here. So here we have sigma x squared. And so again, no parentheses in this one. The next option would be exponents. Indeed, there is an exponent. So we want to do what is in, or we want to do the exponent first before we do anything with the summation notation. So we're still working with this same data set here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take each of these x values and I'm going to square it. Anytime you want a shorthand for the squared symbol, or if you don't want to bother to find the exponent symbol, you can always indicate that it's x squared by using this little caret um, to indicate that that's x squared. Um, but x squared would just be each of those x values multiplied by themselves. So we can do that here in Excel pretty easily again. Um, the way I'm going to do it is again with this same sort of equation where I'm going to take a2 that's that value in that square, and then multiply it by itself. And again, the reason that that's easier is because you could just drag this down and it does it for all the rest of the values. So we squared each of those x values, and that is what you should have gotten after squaring each of those. And looking back at our equation here, the next thing we have to do, or the only thing left to do, is to take care of that sigma, or the summation. 
So now that we've taken care of the exponent, all we have left to do is just add it all together. So again, what we're going to do is just take all of those values, all those squared values, and take the sum of them. So again, you could just type equals sum, click on that, and then drag it, and that will give you the sum. So there is our answer for that second one is 183. So let's go ahead and write that one in. That was oh, over here, one. All right, there we go. We got the answer written in there. And then uh, our next option here would be in parentheses sigma x, and then we got the squared outside of it. So this looks really similar to the last one, but it's actually quite different in, in the process of solving this equation. You'll notice here that in this example, our sigma x is contained within parentheses. Remember what I said before is anytime we have parentheses, you're actually going to want to take care of what's inside of the parentheses first, essentially ignoring all the rest of the equation until you've done that. So here we have our sigma x located within the parentheses itself. So all that means is just add together. So take the summation, take the sum of all of those x values. So simply, we just add together each of those values in our data set. So again, we have our data file here. And really all we could do, or all we need to do, is just take the sum again. And here we're just taking the sum of all of those x values. So we just want to add together all those x values, and that will give us 25. And so going back here, now we have essentially 25 is in the parentheses here. But don't forget that we still need to square it. So we have 25 in our parentheses. We still need to square it. We could do that on our own personal calculator. So let's try that real quick. So when you calculate that out, you should get the answer of 625. So you also could have done that in Excel if you wanted to. Um, and we would do that just by saying equals, so whatever that cell it is, so that 25 was in A7, and we just want to say times A7, and that would give you 25 times 25 is 625. All right, and last but not least, we have this final example, which as you can tell just at the surface level, definitely looks more complicated than some of the other examples we've gone through so far. So here, let's just go ahead and start again with our order of operations. So always anything in parentheses is gonna go first. In this example, we do have parentheses. So we're gonna do what's in the parentheses before we even look at anything else in the equation. Contained within these parentheses, we find that x minus 2. So again, anytime you have parentheses, you're just doing what's inside of them. You're essentially ignoring everything else. So we just want to do this x minus 2 and ignore everything else. So let's go ahead and go back to our data file. Here again, we have all those values in our data set. And so again, I'm just going to take that x minus 2. So we can use Excel again to do those calculations for us if we want. So we could do that by saying equals A2. Again, that's the cell that our data is contained in. We want to just subtract 2 from it. It's really important that you keep the same order as it's listed in the equation um, to make sure to keep your numbers positive or negative when they need to be. So it was x minus 2, so I'm going to put the, the x value first, which um, is contained in my cell A2 or the value of 10, um, and we're going to subtract 2 from that. And that gives us 8. Again, we can just select in that cell, turn that into the little cross, drag it down to have it do it for all those uh, values in our data set. Let's go back to our equation. So we've subtracted 2 from each of those x values. We took care of the parentheses. Next step would now be to take care of the exponent. So it, the next step here would be to actually square all of those x minus 2 values. We'll go back to our Excel file here. We can make a whole new column. Actually, I think is the easiest way to do that here. Let me put this in parentheses, x minus 2. Oops, we already did that. 
and then we want to put in that caret, we're squaring all of those x minus 2 values. So this is just notation to help me for later when I'm looking back at it. All we need to do though is just take all of those x minus 2 values that we already calculated and we want to multiply them by themselves to get the squared value. So we can just go ahead and take b2 times b2, hit enter. Again, we can use that drag feature to do that for all the rest of them. So that go that what that does is it took each of these values here in this um, x minus 2 list and it squared them. So looking back at our equation, only thing we have left to do now is to just take the summation of that. So again, all that summation means is just to add them together. So going back to our data, we'll take the sum of all those values, hit enter, it gives you 99 and that is our answer for that question. So we'll go ahead and add in 99 as our answer here. There we go. All right, and then one other thing that I wanted to point out was um, just a couple other symbol symbols here. Um, so whenever you see a big N or even a little N, um, that is just referencing the number of scores that you have. So a big N would reference the number of scores in a sample, or sorry, <laughs> the big N would represent a number of scores in a population. A little n is usually used to signify the number of scores in a sample. So let's say that this is a uh, population of scores from a class. We only have four students in that class. Um, the big N would be four. If this was a sample, the only difference would just be that you use a little n instead of a big N. Either way, they have the same meaning. It's just the total number of x values that are in your um, in your sample or in your population. So however many scores you have. In this case, we had four scores, there's our n. And then last but not least, we already calculated this um, on our Excel file, but I just wanna put it here um, just in case you also wanted to know the value of sigma x. Again, sigma x would just involve you adding together all of those x values that are in your data file. And we already calculated this out, but I just wanted to write it down so that you have it for later. So the sigma x would be adding together all of those x values. And when you do that, you should get a value of 25. So those are just some examples of how um, the order of operation works when you have um, a summation notation. So hopefully that helps. Talk to you later. Bye.